I've got Mr. Wise cooking breakfast. What time is it? It's 6.30. Billy Bob's gonna be here to pick us up at 7. I can't believe I overslept. Who got you guys up? Mr. Y, he's fixing eggs benedicts. It's a special dish he learned how to make in his cooking class in prison. Mm-hmm. Where's Miss Lottie? She's cleaning up the fruit for him. They put it in these little fruit cups to go with the eggs benedicts. It's eggs benedict. How would you know? You never went to prison. Did you find your fishing poles? Yes, sir. They were in the garage. <laughs> okay, well, get your duffel bags packed. There's uh, clean socks and underwear in the utility room. I'll be in to check everything. I'm taking Garfield in my bag. Who ever heard of taking a stuffed animal camping? That's baby stuff. That's not baby stuff. There's nothing wrong with taking Garfield as their dad. Are you kidding? It's a stroke of genius. What you do is you set him up outside your tent. For all the other animals know, he's a small mountain lion. That's called having a protective decoy. I wish you were going, Dad. Yeah, so do I, son. Unfortunately, I have to work. I wish Miss Lottie was going. Unfortunately, she has to work, too. Yeah, it's pretty funny how you both have to work this weekend and we're going away. You know, Ben, you're getting awfully wise lately. I think when you get back, we need to have a little talk. What about me? Am I wise? You have a different kind of wisdom. What does that mean? It means you're totally clueless. We need some money. What for? Sodies, pretzels, candy. Don't say sodies. My wallet's over there on the dresser. I don't want you boys wandering away from camp and always let Billy Bob light the fire, okay? Hey, Dad, did you know Miss Lottie knows Smokey the Bear? Well, that doesn't surprise me. Miss Lottie knows everybody. Smokey the Bear's not real, Ellie. He's just a man. I know it. Miss Lottie saw him without his costume on. Really? She told you that? You mean she dated Smokey? She didn't date him. She did a story on him. He just wears long underwear underneath all that fur. Why? What's the matter, Dad? Did you think Smokey was moving in on your territory? Territory? Where do you get this stuff? We know you get the hots from Miss Lottie. The hots? So what, Ben? There's nothing wrong with it. I didn't say there was anything wrong with it. Hey, Dad, mm. pretty soon some people you know will be saying this. What? Dad, Miss Lottie, sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. You were that on First the comes love, then comes marriage, then comes Miss Lottie with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it camping. How's your fruit cup, John? Oh, uh, it's very, very good. Can you taste the clove in it? <laughs> not really. That's good. You're not supposed to, you know. Cloves you put in just to enhance the bouquet of your overall deal. So anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry you're not going to be able to go camping with us. Yeah, I wish I could, but... Uh, Georgie Ann is a hell of a camper. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget her first night at camp. There was a coyote howling near their cabin, and all the little girls and counselors began crying. Really? The counselors, too? <laughs> Anyhow, Georgie took off after that coyote, and later on, they found him dead in the woods. Boy, Miss Lottie killed a coyote? No, he died of natural causes. <laughs> but she still got, I believe they called it, the Davy Crockett Award for Bravery. Only one other girl ever received that award, and she later flunked a gender test at the Olympics. Hi. Hey, oh, where have you been? I thought you were upstairs. Grocery store. We can't let my guys go out in the wilderness without the appropriate supplies. Hey, Mr. Y, do you know how come Donald Duck doesn't wear any pants? No, I don't. He doesn't, see? You know, Daisy doesn't wear pants either, come to think of it. <laughs> Probably just a coincidence. Everyone should wear pants, shouldn't they, Dad? Probably if they want to stay out of trouble. Well put. Oh, by the way, your first aid kit's out of insect repellent. Okay, buoy knife, compass in the handle, emergency flare, two cans of sterno in case your fire gets doused over the weekend. Hmm, John might want to keep one of those here. <laughs> hey, Miss Lottie, will you see my steak while I'm gone? Dad's afraid of them. Oh, sure I will. Carmen, you're pretty snake. Well, I, they're not my favorite. I'll never forget this girl in my graduating class named Darlene. She was what the boys back then called the bad girl. Yeah. Her father owned a bait and tackle shop at the lake. One time, four of my buddies got bitten by a nest of copperheads. And Darlene sucked the venom out of every one of them. 
saved their lives. Nobody ever had a bad word to say about Darlene again. I guess that wasn't such a hot story, was it? I need to work on this prison transition thing. All right. The all-exclusive two-day camper shuttle and express is leaving in five minutes. Give me that, Billy Bob. I want everybody to go to the bathroom now because this bus does not make pit stops. <laughs> Unless, of course, you have seniority like Mr. Lottie. All right, Billy Bob. Just fine, sir. I don't mean to ask you since we're apparently spending the weekend together. Is that your real name? Yes, it is. Well, I'll be damned. No, I was with a guy in prison named Billy Ray. I guess he wouldn't be a relation. Maybe distant. Okay, you boys, go get the rest of your stuff. We're leaving right now. Come hey, on. Carson Lee, that's a really cool canteen. Ooh, and I like that patch. It is my dad's in Vietnam. And he also got a medal for bravery. Really? John's got one, too. You're kidding. I knew you guys went to Vietnam. I didn't know you were decorated. Well, it's not as good as the Davy Crockett Award, but we try. John, you remember the last time we went camping? It was the night Carson Lee was born. She was three weeks early. Mavis was at home. You never saw two guys fold up a tent faster. I'll never forget the night that Georgiana was born. They brought her into the nursery, and as she went by, she held out her little arm and said, I love you, pup. <laughs> it was amazing. Really, just born? Isn't that a little early to be talking? Oh, I'm just paraphrasing. I, mean, I, I didn't catch the whole thing because all the other little babies were crying. We're waiting. All right, let's go. Come on, guys. I want you to have a great time. Bye, Dad. Wait, 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 wait. What is that in your hand? I'm taking your electric razor. We thought we might need to shave something in the woods. Give me that. You think you're going to shave something? Thanks for feeding my stomach. Yeah, anytime. Bye-bye. Have fun. Bye, Pop. Be careful. That's exactly what I was going to say to you. I've never seen so much equipment. Uh, it looks like you're going to have to tie me to the front bumper. <laughs> I was going to do that anyway for making fun of my name. Have a good time. quiet evening around the house, okay? Thanks, Mavis. My trunk finally got in from Paris, so I thought I'd wear my best dress. Lucky dress. <laughs> you know, this is the first time we've been alone in this house. Oh, I have some things to tell you. Not now. Well, first of all, Billy Bob called while you were in the shower. Yeah, is everything all right? Yeah, everything's all right. It's just that Elliot took your wallet with him. <laughs> Evidently, he misunderstood you. Oh, well, that's okay. If we need anything, we can always use your credit cards. <laughs> I don't have credit cards. I declare bankruptcy, remember? Okay, then we won't leave the house. <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. You know, Miss Lottie, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you talk too much. You know, I really think you should stop calling me Miss Lottie. I was going to, when the right moment comes along. Oh, and what might that be? I was thinking it might be coming along tonight. <laughs> was there anything else? Yes. You know, Sam the snake? Oh, yes. Well, when I went to feed him, he wasn't in his jar. <laughs> what do you mean, he wasn't in his jar? Well, I don't know. He's just gone. He's out. I guess Elliot left the lid off. I can't believe this. <laughs> that kid's going to be grounded for the rest of his life. I mean, he's going right from here to the nursing home. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter is I hate snakes. I can't even stand the thought of that thing crawling around this house. Have you seen it? No, but it's really no big deal. I mean, he's not poisonous. Well, yeah, he's a snake, isn't he? I mean, King Kong wasn't poisonous, but he was King Kong. I <laughs> You served in Vietnam? Yes, I did. That's right. I mean, I was scared of snakes there, too. 
I'm sorry if that doesn't fit your version of what a man should be, Miss I killed a coyote with my bare hands. Well, you don't have to get mad. We'll just call animal control. Animal control won't come unless it's poisonous. How do you know that? Because it happened once before. It crawled into one of my shoes. I had to give it to the Salvation Army. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, well, what are we going to do? You folks are really lucky. It's the last room in the entire hotel. There's some really big conventions in town. Oh, well, this will do just fine. Thank you. Well, I don't know if they told you the front desk, but this room is actually part of the bridal suite. There's a young couple there tonight. I guess they couldn't afford the whole shebang. Well, if you need anything else... Just to be left alone. Thank you very much. Whoa. <clears throat> a quarter. <laughs> it's practically a down payment on a newspaper. Yes. <laughs> well, I wish it could be more. Unfortunately, my son has my wallet. Oh, hey, I understand. I saw them shaking out your Garfield bank at the desk. <laughs> anyway... Your climate control is over here. If you need to dial out, press 9 for local, 8 for long distance, 0 for the hotel operator. Is this your first visit with us? Yes. However, we have stayed in a hotel before. Well, if you need anything else, just ask for me. My name is Dave. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I know you know about the sanitary seal on the toilet, but we had an elderly couple last night who had trouble breaking it. If that happens to you, my advice is just slip it off. Don't worry, Dave. If I have to, I'll tear it with my teeth. <laughs> hey, I'm out of here. I'm basically kidding around the house. Dave certainly gave us a wide variety of options. What shall we do first? I think first we should polish our shoes and then break the seal on the toilet. Oh. <laughs> There's yet another option. We could leave the seal unbroken and drive Dave insane. You're a bad girl. Oh, first I'd like to order some room service. What for? Well, uh, some chocolate cake or something. We didn't have any dinner, remember? We, we don't have any money. Look, maybe the kids in the bridal suite will order room service. When they put their tray outside, we'll eat the scraps. Oh. Ooh, mints, mints. Ah, yes. One for me and one for you. Ooh. No, 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 no. Look, I want you to have my mint. You have to keep up your strength. Oh, you're too good. No, I have big plans for you tonight. Fantasizing again? who's still a virgin. I can't even get the first base on my wedding night. Well, how do you think I feel? It's my first time, too. Let's give it one more shot. This time, we'll do it your way and try kissing. Hey. <laughs> just, just ignore him. It's none of our business. Stop it! I told you I'm not interested. Not interested? Not, well, if you're not interested on your honeymoon, then when will you be? In a year? Ten years? When I'm an old man? Oh, I don't know, Johnny. <laughs> Kid. Just, just a minute, I'll take care of you. Uh, hi, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hi. I'm sorry to interrupt, but could you keep it down? What are you doing in our suite? Tammy? No, this isn't your suite. We rented this room. How'd you get this door open? What? No, it just opened by itself. You didn't lock it from the inside. Isn't that funny? Dave is usually so meticulous. Tammy! Hi. Hi, don't be alarmed. Uh... It's everything's, you know, this is sort of like that commercial, you know, and the guy opens up his medicine chest, sees somebody else on the other side and goes, Mona! Do you remember that? No. Well, look, I know you've got problems of your own, but you see, this is kind of a, like a honeymoon for us, too, so we'd appreciate it if you could just keep it down a little. Well, hey, don't talk to me. Talk to her. I want to go home! This isn't what I thought it would be. Is there anything that I can do? Gee. Another woman. Oh, you know something? Maybe if you call the concierge, they could send someone up. Don't be silly. This kid's in trouble. She wants to talk to me. Come on in. What was your name? Tammy? No, oh, come on in. And you can come on in, too. I'm Georgianne. What's your name? Donnie. Donnie. Tammy, Donnie, this is John. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Donnie. <laughs> We've been going steady for two years, but we were saving ourselves for marriage. And it's just not what I expected. Well, it's not what I expected. I just tried to peek inside that deal there, and she went crazy on me. Well, I know you were going to take off all your clothes and scream, Cowabunga! I was just trying to break the ice. Excuse me, Miss Lottie, I really think this is none of our business. You call her Miss Lottie and you're married? Hey, they're as screwed up as we are. <laughs> Anybody talk to you about sex before your wedding? Well, my mother said... Look, I know how everything works. 
I just need to put what I know into action, you know? I know how you feel. <laughs> we talked to our minister, but he just told us about how we should treat each other and to cleave unto each other and stuff like that. I'd be glad to cleave unto her, but she won't let me. <laughs> Where's the end of this? What are we doing here? What we are doing here is looking at two perfect examples of what happens to young people when they live in a country that has no real sex education program. Oh. I mean, we wouldn't think of letting our children drive a car without them first learning about how the engine works, how the steering wheel works, the stick shift, the brakes, what to do in case of an emergency, and yet we send them off to get married with absolutely no preparation whatsoever. Well, I made a B in driver's ed. <laughs> so what are you saying? What I'm saying, Donnie, is you got a license today to drive something that you have absolutely no idea how to operate. Excuse me, I think you're being a little hard on Donnie here. I mean, Tammy has that same license. I think she could have a little more responsibility in this, too. I think Donnie's done all he can with his engine. <laughs> and then after we get in bed, the first thing he does is grab my ankles and scream, Make a wish! <laughs> He might want to look over that manual one more time. Okay, look, I have an idea. Tammy, why don't I take you into the bathroom with me? We can have a little girl talk, and you and Donnie can stay out here and talk. Excuse me. Dear Abby, could I see you over here for just one minute? What the hell are you doing? I don't want to talk to Donnie. I don't know Donnie. Look, I'm sorry their honeymoon isn't going as planned, but neither is mine. This is really none of our business. Are you serious? What? I can't believe you're saying that. These kids have obviously not gotten the preparation that they need. The system has let them down. Their folks have let them down. We are all they have left. Well, isn't there some kind of a honeymoon hotline? I mean, <laughs> maybe we should teach by example. Oh, don't be ridiculous. What if that were your son? Well, no, this would never happen to my son. My sons would be prepared. I talk all the time to my sons. Oh, yeah, right. You tell them things like duck should wear pants. Well... <laughs> All right, let's get this over with. Where do you want us? Okay, I think we should go in here and you two can stay out. Okay, but, but let's just make it quick, huh? I think we found our starting point. <laughs> Come on, Tammy, these two have a lot of soul searching to do. Donnie, before we begin, let me ask you a personal question. <laughs> Did you and Tammy already eat your mints? <laughs> I'll never forget my first time was with a guy named Randy Higginbotham. Our first time would have been a whole lot easier if we'd just done it in a car like everybody else and gotten it over with. Trust me, Tammy, you do not want to make love for the first time in a car. I never understood that. It's highly overrated and it's so stupid. I mean, of all the places to be intimate with someone, why would you pick something that is surrounded by almost 360 degrees of glass? I mean, you might as well make love in an aquarium at SeaWorld. I don't know why people don't just shell out the 20 bucks and buy a pup tent. So where was your first time? In a car. Donnie, I, d I don't want to get too personal, but have you ever heard of the word foreplay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know all about that. Before you knocked, we'd already watched uh, five minutes each of three dirty movies for free on the Patreon. Well, any longer than that, there's a charge. Well, I really don't think that constitutes foreplay. You see, Donnie, women nowadays, they say they want equality politically, economically, socially, but in the bedroom, they want to be taken care of a little, you know? They want to be pampered. You follow me? Yeah, I think so. Kind of like in that movie, Diddler on the Roof. <laughs> so I think the way you have to look at this right now, Tammy, is Donnie's 19 years old, he's at his sexual peak. And all the blood in his body is constantly leaving his brain and filling other cavities. <laughs> Consequently, he's not very smart. <sighs> So what should I do? Well, I think you have to teach him what it is you expect from him. If you cry, he'll just feel helpless. You have to take charge. If he wants to play ball in your court, you make the rules. Where, when, how long, and if there's going to be a return engagement. And once you realize you're in control, you can just relax and enjoy what Donnie has to offer. At least that's how it works in theory. So when do I hit my sexual peak? When you're about my age. <laughs> so, that's what I think. What do you think? I think you and Donnie should be together. <laughs> My first experience was a total disaster. Really? Yeah. Well, what happened? Well, it's a little personal. What? Anyway, her name was Carolyn Catcher's side. <laughs> it was in a car. It was cramped. It was hot. 
Several things got caught in between the bucket seats and the center console. <laughs> After that, I blacked out. <laughs> so, let me see if I have this straight. What you're saying is, basically, a man's got to be kind and gentle and loving, but also still a man and still in charge. It's basically. I know you don't believe this, but that was the same message in wet car hops. <laughs> I've tried to be sweet to you, Tammy. Heck, I've even tried to be gentle and loving. But enough's enough. I've still got to be a man. And you're going to get pampered whether you like it or not. You know what your problem is, Donnie? You're at the most stupid time of your life. All the blood in your body is being drained from your brain. So I'll be making the decisions now. And my decision is nobody's playing ball on my court tonight. Just for your information, Tammy, foreplay does not mean four hours. Yeah? Well, it doesn't mean four minutes either, Donnie. Hey! You said I'm at my sexual peak. Help me. I'm peaking as we're speaking. You could just go sleep in the other room and peak all by yourself. Great. And I'll just watch this movie, Flash Pants. <laughs> I've waited so long for this. I don't care where we are. I can make love to you on the floor of Death Valley. Oh, no, me too. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Did I, I hurt you? Just your elbow. It's okay. Oh. There, thank you. Music. Oh. I love you. Damn! What? With me? Well, I think we just found Elliot's tape. No, 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 no. I'm like, keep it going. Okay. What, what have you got in your mouth? Oh, it's a cookie. I found it. I hate to tell you this, but I think that's a dog biscuit. Hey, I'm not proud. Oh, 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 what is that? We just found Elliot's big rig. Oh. I wonder what Carolyn Ketcher's side's doing tonight. I don't know, but I bet she's not eating a dog biscuit with a big rig in her back. You don't know Carolyn. I wonder what Randy Higginbotham is doing tonight. I hope he's going across a bucket seat with something caught in a console. <laughs> don't you ever, ever mention his name to me again. Come here and kiss me. You kiss me. You are so sexy. Oh, mm. oh God, I worship you. Uh, Don't stop. Uh, Don't ever stop. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening underneath the moon. Skin and rinky dinky dink. Skin and rinky do. I love you. Oh. Georgie, yeah.